Hey y'all, welcome back. My name's Crystal, and I've got a uh, vocal for you today. I went thrifting yesterday, and um, I hadn't had a good, nice, long day of thrifting, checking out multiple stores in a long time. Um, so my, my mom and I went out yesterday and hit up some stores, and I, you know, of course, picked up some books along the way, Got some really good deals, good stuff, so I'm gonna show them to you. Excited? Let's go! <laughs> Got a big box here. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> um, I picked up The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. I listened to this on audiobook earlier this year and really loved it, so I was very excited to get a copy um, for myself in case I want to reread it. Because um, I might even reread this one. Um, it was a really good creepy story so I was very excited to find that. I found a copy of Philippa Gregory's Tidelands. I read several Philippa Gregory books, um, more of her historical fiction um, books based off of the sort of like Tudor, War of the Roses, that type of time period with the kings and everything. And I really like them and this was a dollar so I thought go ahead and give it a go right you can't really pass up when it's a dollar am I right <laughs> just like this one I found an old uh, Paul Anderson uh, Orion shall rise nice old sci-fi story um, let's see adventure memorable characters post Holocaust world Always wonderful, wonderful, daring do. Hard science tempered with survivalist tricks for cutting edge of authenticity. Mm. I've not read anything by this author, but I've got a couple of his books on my shelf. Um, so, added another two one. Added another one. But I'm excited and a great, pretty, great old cover. So, let's enjoy that. I was very excited to find this hardback. Of the Twelve by Justin Cronin. I love this uh, trilogy and I definitely want to get the books for my shelf and to find a nice hardback for a dollar. I mean you can't you can't pass that up. Am I right? So this um, this is book two in the Passage series but you know that's fine. Maybe I'll find the other two at another set store another day. But glad to have these on my shelf. Now this is a sort of post-apocalyptic um, vampire-ish story. Love it. Very, very good. Highly recommend. Um, let's see. I've got a couple of little middle grade books that I, I like to read middle grade. Um, Pam Munoz Ryan's Becoming Naomi Leone. I read Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan and it's one of probably my favorite books ever. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so I definitely, and I have a couple more of hers on my shelf, but I definitely want to read like everything that she has. So, um, picked up for a quarter and along with this one also a quarter America's Most Haunted True Scary Places by Alan Zulo and this one caught my eye because the back says have you heard about the North Carolina town where witnesses have seen ghostly lights for centuries dun 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 I live in North Carolina so I was like yeah I'm gonna get that so I can figure out what these ghost lights are about so I can't wait to it's a little thing, so it looks like a lot of fun. It's a really fun cover. So that one's fun. Um, that was more for my husband. I had scored uh, four old uh, it's like Stephen King books at one thrift store for a dollar each, so I picked those up. The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. This is actually one I don't own already, so add that to my collection. <laughs> I do have Misery, of course, but not this really cool copy right I don't think I've ever even seen this one before you got Paul sitting down there in his wheelchair and this shadowed axe figure of Annie it's so great <laughs> so a lot of fun like that one this old copy of Firestarter Firestarter is another one I've not read of his um, so that's exciting now I can read it of course, I've seen that movie, you know, 
love that one. And then I have this old copy of the gun, of, um, Gunslinger. I have, I have another copy of this too, but I think this one actually looks a little bit better. So, um, either way, I'll keep one and get rid of the one. I'm again, they weren't, I think this was 50 cents. So, <laughs> so, can pass it up. And now the rest of these books are really from this one thrift store that I went to where I just really uh, hit pay dirt with old uh, pay, uh, paperbacks and um, and all of these were 50 cents each that were left in the box here. Very excited. I did find a cost copy of John Scalzi's Red Shirts. This is a newer book of course but um, very excited to find that for 50 cents. I think this was sort of a a comedy sci-fi kind of thing kind of playing with the idea of the red shirts from Star Trek you know they always get killed first on the <laughs> you know the planetary missions and things so sounds fun let's see I did find this 2312 by Kim Stanley Robinson this has been on my radar for a long time and for 50 cents I'll pick it up and maybe hopefully get to it some days slightly chunky Ooh. It's a space opera. The year is 2312. Scientific and technological advances have opened gateways to an extraordinary future. Earth is no longer humanity's um, only home. Their new habitats have been created throughout the solar system, on moons, planets, and in between. But in the year 2312, a sequence of events will force humanity to, to confront its past, its present, and its future. That sounds fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Let's see. Ugh, sorry, I'm digging through this box here. I found a copy of Jennifer Hillier's Jar of Hearts. I've heard great stuff about this book, but never gotten uh, around to it. So, again, 50 cents. Yep, I'm gonna pick that up and uh, get to that one someday. You know, the old someday. Today is a someday. Alrighty. So, um, Needlepoint by Samantha Chase really love this <laughs> cover. It's so great. The tiny pinprick of poison. The calling card of a crazed killer. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it looks like a murder, murder mystery. Yeah. I just, the cover alone really sold me on that one. As do all these old of A.C. Andrews books. Whenever I see one out in the wild, um, I pick it up because they're just so great. This is like book five in a series. I don't even think I own any of the other ones, but I, you know, I just pick them up, you know, because I just have to, it's like a rescue. You have to rescue this one because <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> anyone read this series let me know is it good I might have to get to it because one of the books in the series is named is titled crystal so I'm gonna find that one for sure I found an old copy of a vampire diaries book called the struggle I don't know a thing about it I think it's, it's volume two I just picked it up because that's a pretty great cover I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever really read this one, but it just like said, pick me up. It's like an awesome cover. <laughs> so yeah, oh, it says the rage of jealousy. Yeah, that could be uh, trouble. <laughs> Blood to Blood, the Dracula story continues by Elaine Bergstrom. This cover. Yeah, this is coming home with me too. Again, 50 cents. And I think this is actually kind of a sequel to another book that was written by this author, but by a different name, but it was called Mina. So then like this one kind of like follows that story, which was of course following the original Dracula, but focusing on Mina. I think this one continues to follow Mina. Yeah. After her second trip to Romania, Mina Harker returns to London, finally free of Lord Dracula's spell, building a new life for herself. So it could be interesting to see what more Mina gets up to. You 
never know. I found the Wolfen novel of Escapable, Inescapable Terror by Whitley Stryber. The only thing I've read by Whitley Stryber was The Communion, right? The alien abduction story. I read that like a million years ago. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. It's not really a step back. It's more just a now on a deserted street, the bloodiest horror is still to come. Woman. I don't know if the pages are supposed to be that like tattery looking. I don't know if you can tell, but it looks like it was meant to be that way. I don't know. <laughs> but this, let's see, in the dark, they are watching, they are waiting for you. No one has ever lived to tell the horrifying truth about them. Yet even now the wolfen are gathered in the night dark alleys, unseen, poised, ready to destroy their helpless human prey. Only one man and one woman, trained cops, willing to risk their lines, stand in their way. The Wolfen. <laughs> Shoot, that was coming home with me. Let's see. I found this by uh, Dan Simmons, Love for Death. I can't just, I don't know. Really interesting cover. I want to say this. Let me look it up again. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, this is a collection of some stories in here. Um, one, two, three, four, five different. I think there's a, some sexy stuff in here from what I read from reviews. One lady was like, <laughs> one lady was like, there's a lot of like sex talk in this book. So anyway, so it's just a, it's stories, but just a really great cover. I've only read one thing by Dan Simmons, which was the terror. And I really liked that, so in fifty cents, you guys. I'm gonna i I'm just I'm gonna pick it up, you know, I mean I'm gonna buy it. That's just how that's just how it is. It's life. <laughs> life Blood by Thomas Hoover. This one looked cool too. This is maybe more of a thriller, but let's see. Perfect specimen. It, it, it lies hidden deep in the mist-shrouded rainforest of Central America, a place where a brilliant doctor fulfills dreams for some and creates chilling nightmares for others. Now filmmaker Morgan James is about to journey straight into the heart of a dark conspiracy where a bizarre human experiment comes at a terrible price and where she may be the next to pay with her life blood. Could be cool. That could be cool, you guys. No, I'm down. Bit of a darling island of Dr. Moreau thing, perhaps. We'll see some year when I read it. <laughs> all right, the rest of these. Let me make sure I got them all. The rest of these are John Saul books. Um, I got all that they had there. Because again, 50 cents. Here we go. In the Dark of the Night. Let's see. Chicago Couple. Rambling Lakeside House. There are kids with them. Perfect place to spend some time exploring. Ooh, something is discovered in a hidden room. Okay. Hidden room that like that sells me right there really. Goes from there, yeah. Spooky house. That sounds fun. That sounds really fun. <laughs> Hellfire. Awesome cover. Yeah, I've actually not read any John Saul books in all my years of reading books. But for a hundred years, the old mule has sat silent. His dread secrets locked away and barred from view. Still the people of the town remember, remember and whisper that fateful day when horrifying flames claimed eleven innocent lives. The day the mill's iron doors slammed shut forever. You know, this town is tucked away beyond the interstate, all but forgotten. They think about over reopening the mill. Mm. Unleash an elemental fury. 
<gasps> okay, yeah. Hellfire. That one sounds good. Yeah. The homing. Sounds pretty good. Widow. To the countryside. She's gonna get remarried. But something sinister awaits. <gasps> dun dun. <laughs> Midnight Voices, the title, even, but this is like, that's already intriguing to me. Anytime people hear voices at midnight, you know, that's not going to end well. That's not going to end well at all. So yeah, we got that one. The Manhattan Hunt Club. I don't know what this one is. We got some college students wrongly convicted, wrongly or falsely convicted of a brutal, brutal crime. Dun dun dun. There's other plans for them though. A place far deadlier than any penitentiary. Ooh, soon Jeff finds himself beneath the teeming streets of Manhattan and a hidden landscape of twisting tunnels and forgotten subterranean chambers. Okay, so we've got dark spooky places, underground, in the tunnels. Here, the invisible population of the homeless, the desperate, and the mad. They've carved out their own shadow society, but they are not alone. Okay. Someone has made this their private killing ground. A la... What's that old... Uh, damn it. What's that old uh, short story about where they go hunt people? What's the name of that story? Y'all know. Let me know. Read it in like high school. Required reading. All right. Sleepwalk. I love this like peak of this eye right there. The eyes there. Really good looking. Got New Mexico, a peaceful little desert town, except for one thing. Somebody here hates teenagers. Well, I mean, you know, hates them. Troublemakers, rebels that have to be controlled, silenced. That's like grumpy old man to the extreme. Okay. <laughs> okay, I've got the right hand of evil. I love this group. I love this house there. Surrounded by some maybe. And there's some wisteria or something. Oh, but something is something's on fire there. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're going into an ancestral home in Louisiana after the death of an estranged aunt. I mean, that's all I need to know. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> okay, lastly, I've got The Unloved by John Saul. The Unloved, yeah. Amazing cover on that one. Look at that. That looks so good, doesn't it? We've got a secluded island off the South Carolina coast. The Devereaux Mansion, okay, yeah. Isolated, old mansion, a once great plantation, oh lord. But now it's crumbling, all right. Uh, Kevin Devereaux returned home, the old return home trope, that's one of my favorites. Oh, with his wife and kids. To visit Kevin's hated and frightening mother. Oh my god, why would you go? Oh, she said she was ill, but is that really why the old woman has summoned the son home? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, horribly, one of the Devereaux's is going to die. And now all the dark secrets of this once grand southern family will emerge to wrap their evil around the unexpecting children. <gasps> the unloved. So who is the unloved? The mom? Is she the mom that's unloved? Or is the mom unloving to everybody else? So like they're the unloved. I don't know. We'll see someday. So I got all these John Saul books. So like instant collection, you know what I mean? You gotta love that. <laughs> so that's it, you guys. I got some really fun stuff at the thrift store. Do you guys go thrifting? Do you, do you like hunting the, you know, the thr thrill of the hunt? That's what I like going thrifting for. You never know what you're going to find. And it's so fun. So thanks for watching. That's going to do me for today. I'll catch you on the next one.